Welcome back. Marinero with you. Jason DeTulio, the head coach of the Impact's U18 Academy team in studio right now. Jason and I go, well, Jason was a very, very talented player. But unfortunately, injuries cut short your career. Jason, good afternoon. Well, good morning. Not good afternoon yet. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Tony, for having me. All right, okay. For those who remember Jason DeTulio playing, I talked about injuries cutting short your career. Talk to us about some of those injuries that you had, Jason. I had a couple of a uh, couple of knee surgeries that ended up, uh, you know, I had to make a decision in 2008 to to stop playing. But uh, I mean, that was then, and now uh, now back on the field uh, full time and uh, and doing what I love for the Montreal Impact. All right. Once you you made that decision that you know what my body just can't do this anymore. I can't play at the level that I think I'm capable of playing at because of course the injuries have got in the way. What were you thinking about in terms of after career at that point? I uh, never worked a day in my life, Tony. So it was it was, it was tough. On what do I do next? Um, took about uh, well, you you and I both know we uh, uh, we opened up a sports store together yeah. and uh, you know went and tried to see how that was going. But I missed the field too much and uh, quickly realized that I needed to get into um, into coaching and, and learn the game from a different perspective. And and I'm still learning now every day and becoming a student of the game okay uh you know you talked about learning um w would you say so you were actually learning on the job is that it when did I you get that opportunity and are you still learning on the job i guess p coaches say they learn every day like you just said right it's always learning on the job you learn every day because you're you're, you're dealing with youngsters uh, and, and you feed off them and you uh, you know you were a player and now you're you're on the other side and uh, you, you as a coach, as an educator, you have a you have a huge impact on the development of the player. So it is it is your duty to do your homework and make sure that uh, you're learning every day and you're and you're getting better every day, so that you're relaying the message, so that they can perform and and make a career. So you went to the Montreal Impact, of course, uh, and their academy. And how many teams have you been with? You're coaching the U18. Team, but was it always U18 or did you uh, dabble with other age groups? It's about four years now that the academy exists. The first year I was with the under-16s. Um, and the, the three years after that, um, I've been with the U18s. So the team that I have now is actually my first year U16 team. Oh, that's cool. So you got back together with those guys. So there's yeah. some... Uh, you're, you're coaching a very important age group. I mean, now, come to think of it, they're all important, right? If you're coaching a U9 or a U10 or a U11 age group. I mean, this is where you want to make sure that you plant the seeds and that the tree grows straight and grows properly. You're really impacting the development of the player. At the same time, some of these players that are with you right now are players that are on the cusp of making the pro team, right? And if not the pro team, maybe going to the U23 team, but the U23 team, with all due respect to them, I mean, let's be honest, there are some players on that team that will get an opportunity with the pro team. But if you're 22 and you haven't cut it yet, it's it's a very, very critical time. At 18, you still have some time in your development, but you're going to be working with a lot of kids that have a chance to make it to that pro team. And it's it's, it's right there. It's, it's a... Um, I agree on the U18 being an important age group for more than the reason that, you know, the 18s... Um, the best 18 year olds are going to end up with FC Montreal or with the first team. I think it's an important age group because it kind of justifies or it, it confirms the work we've been doing for the past four years. A lot of these players, the 1996s, 97s, because it's a U17, U18 group, have been with us from the beginning. Uh, and we expected four or five years later down the line to be. Uh, considered one of the best teams in the league. So it's just, it's a complement of all the work that's been done in the academy. And, and we expect, and we expected this year that the U18 uh, do well uh, because they've been together, they've been together for a while. And now it's, now it's decision-making time on which, you know, which of those U18s will go with FC Montreal because FC Montreal is that, uh, is the is the next step. They're going to have to be able to, to perform at the, uh, with FC Montreal uh, before they consider um, w with the Montreal Impact. Your U18 team played in the uh, USSDA, the United States Soccer Development Academy. I, I think you finished with a record of 22-2-2 or something, right? Correct. I mean, you ran away. Um, 
Is it um, what kind of league is it? I'm, I'm wondering how competitive is it? Because if it is competitive and that's your record, then you have a hell of a team. Is it that you have a hell of a team or is it a little of a combination of both? What is it exactly? Uh, I believe we have the players right now that that were committed from day one. You know, Tony, a lot of people said that, you know, uh, ah, this year was, was easy. But I can guarantee that our trainings weren't. And for... F- for people or for uh, fans that know the Montreal Impact and that know Jason DiTullio and, and, and Wilfred and all the coaching staff, we emphasize a lot on our training. Training wasn't hard. Uh, tr- sorry, training wasn't easy. It was hard every single day, which made the games on Saturday a lot easier, you know, and the boys bought into that. And that's the reason why our Saturday games and for those that were with us all year, it was tough. It was tough. It didn't matter who we played. It didn't matter if we played Philadelphia Union, uh, an MLS team, or a private academy. Our approach to training every single day um, was to perform and get the call up, you know, to be one of the starters on the weekend. So yeah, the games were some of the games were easy, but we made it easy because we trained uh, at the highest level possible. What's uh, in, in conversation with Jason Natulio, the coach of the U18 uh, Montreal Impact Academy team? Um, what's a typical day like? as far as training is concerned, for the players? Um, most of my players are in college, the U18s, but 95% of the uh, of the academy boys go to school from 8 in the morning till 12. Uh, 12 bus brings them to the training center. So 95% of the academy, uh, they are sported students? Yes, they're all sported students, except for the uh, the second year U18, uh, U18 players. Yeah. Of course, okay. Um, then they come in, the younger ones are on the field from 1 to 3, while the older ones are in classroom. Uh, studying uh, or doing homework and then there's the switch at three to five so three to five the younger ones go inside the classrooms and the older ones are on the field okay when I'm curious when the younger ones are on the field one to three yeah I believe it's that's the way you just said it right the younger ones are on the field one to three and then when it's over at three o'clock they go to the classroom between three and five yeah is, is that something that's mandatory to go to study hall or can they actually make their way home or be picked up after the training session, one hundred percent mandatory. Uh, school become comes before uh, soccer, and it's been clear uh, from day one, and we stick to that. We have um, we have teachers in the teachers and um, uh, in the study hall in the study hall tutors, actual teachers and tutors, actual teachers and tutors, not uh, just someone who's supervising and no, saying, no, okay, no. I just want to make sure the kids aren't and fooling around. You know, the coaching staff is aware of what's going on in school as well. I know what's going on in school. We get a report um, every week. So if there is a player that's struggling in math uh, and we feel there's a possibility that uh, that he might not uh, pass or he needs a, an important exam, we'll definitely take him out of training or put a specific uh, tutor on him for a couple of days. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, in, in terms of, you know, so you just said it's one to three for the smaller kids they train, three to five for the older kids they train. When they're in study hall, when they're in study hall, and you said they're not doing too well, they can be taken out of training, and you give them extra tutoring support. Is 100%, that right? 100%, yeah. Okay. In conversation with Jason Natulio, it's 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 great because there are those that are saying, you know what, I, yeah, my son likes to play soccer, but I don't want to compromise his studies. You are on top of it because some are now... You have to go. You have to go to specific schools that the Montreal Impact deals with. Is that correct? Yeah, um, and, and it's a topic that comes up often. Pearson uh, in English. Pearson in English, Edouard Montpetit, and uh, Saint X uh, in French. Um, most of the reasons is the Mont- uh, the English school board and the French school board administration uh, uh, holidays. They're not all the same. So for our administration group, uh, it's not easy. But we have close to 100% uh, success rate. Um, and for the players that didn't pass, well, they're no longer with us. So uh, we put a lot of emphasis on school. Yes, uh, you know, a lot of players or, or, or people are not 100% comfortable with the fact that there's only those three schools. Um, but we're, we're in an environment right now where um, these are the schools that you have to you have to come to to, to be part of this experience. And uh, we make make sure that the boys are, are, are focused on the education because we believe that, you know, uh, y- y- the players that we have should be able to, to manage their time in school and soccer. If the child goes to another sportitude school and once he finishes at noon, he makes his way over to the training grounds. Possible or not possible? Not right now. No, because of the administration. Because it's 
again, if you want us and we believe in, in, in communicating with the teachers and communicating with the student council, if you have six, seven, eight schools, mm-hmm. it's tough. You can say, yeah, school's important, but this is our way of really controlling, uh, recognizing uh, which players are struggling. In I which, hear you. Um, so it's really to, to focus on those three schools. And it's, it's even easier, though, if you, if, if you had one school instead of three. If we had one school. Uh, the Impact's going to have their own school one day. 100%. You don't have to say anything. 100%. 100%. Only makes sense. Right? Right, Tom. In, in, conversation, <laughs> in conversation with Jason DeTulio. Talk to us about the new training grounds. Tony, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. We haven't been there yet. You haven't, haven't been there yet? Tony, we haven't been there yet. We're excited. I know, We're, it's still, I, I know it's still on their construction and they're doing phase by phase by phase. But Exactly. When I saw the plans... This is this is Tony works. We're excited. We're you know I've been with the club since uh, since 2002 now. I've uh, been a fan since since the day I was born. I think um, we're just excited. We can't wait for it to to to, to be finalized where we can move in. Uh, so where are you training right now? Right now we're at uh, the Saputo Stadium turf field. The grounds, right? The yeah. grounds. Yeah. Uh, and we're fortunate enough that the that the first team, um, uh, Frank and. Um, and Adam Braz uh, are allowed Friday so that we can prepare for the playoffs because the playoffs will be on grass. Yeah. And you know what's awesome too is that when you're at the academy, and I would imagine when you bring in teams, when you bring in teams, you already know most of your games are going to take place. And I'm not talking about the U18s per se who play in the USSDA, but a lot of the younger academy teams, when they bring in teams to play exhibition games, they're playing at the turf at Saputo. They don't have to go to the South Shore. They don't have to go to Mascush. They don't have to go to, you know, it's it's pretty much... Yeah, that's been our home. It's been our home for the past four years, and uh, the boys are comfortable there. And uh, not too sure about our record at home in the past two years, but it's it's definitely uh, pretty good. Jason, there probably are some parents that are listening saying, you know what? I could see my child in that environment, but I'm worried about injuries because they're going to be on the field five days a week. They're going to be on the field for uh, 90 minutes, probably every day. Uh, they're going to be exerting themselves. Um, risk uh, injuries happen even with accidents. Sometimes you're just you're, you're walking in front of the net. Somebody takes a shot off the face. Boom! It's a concussion. Right? These mm-hmm. things can happen. Talk to us about how closely you monitor. Um, or how much you work on basically injury prevention and stuff like this. Because I know that you have a program and you know when to put it in fifth gear and I know you know when to put it back down to second. Tony, it's all about preparation. We have an academy staff uh, of over 15 uh, full-timers that we're, you know, we show up to work every day and we're working on how how, how can we progress as an academy? Uh, so everything is calculated from uh, the intensity of a Monday training versus the intensity of a Wednesday training, the volume, um, injury prevention. We put a program in place, the boys three times a week before training on their own. We leave a lot of um, uh, of self uh, uh, autonomy. Sorry for yeah. doing French. Uh, um, independence. Independence where, yeah. where they're aware that you're as, you can have all the talent in the world, but you need to be on the field. Okay, and the past four years, it took us some time to 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 make them understand about um, uh, about their body and, and and how to take care of your body. So uh, everything is calculated from day one on the technical aspect, tactical aspect, technical uh, and physical and mental. And for sure. you know, you are a full time coach. Yes, correct. This is what you do. Of course. So when all I'm getting at is for those who are worried about, okay, well, if I put my child in their hands, are they going to be able to take care of this or take care of that or monitor this or monitor that? This is what you do for a living. You do it from morning, afternoon, and night. You are a full-time soccer coach. And with all due respect uh, to others, you're not working in a pepin, you know, morning, afternoon, and then going to teach kids how to play soccer at night. Hmm. You're full-time. Full-time, no hours, uh, and our major, our main goal is to develop players to play for the Montreal Impact. And and to have a career, Tony. Uh, you know, a lot of our players want to play for the Montreal Impact because now they feel part of the family. But it would be wrong to say that, you know, I don't want to go play for Bologna or I don't want to go play for Manchester United. If you're good enough, you know, I always tell my players, if you're good enough and we got a phone call from Montreal, um, from Manchester United, uh, from from any of the bigger clubs I'll bring your bags to the airport you know our job is to is to develop these young 
uh, these young adults uh, into having a long-term career. And of course, it's for the Montreal Impact. You know, that's that's the plan.